Romans 2.10-3.20 Devotional Focus Verse What then are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3, 9 and 10 Recently, a friend drew my attention to the wording on three t-shirts. The first shirt was imprinted with the words, Oldest child, I make the rules. The second read, Middle child, I'm the reason we have rules. And the third, Youngest child, the rules don't apply to me. She laughed and commented that the words on the shirts were totally applicable to her three children. That caused me to reflect on our family and I quickly realized that the t-shirt wording rang true regarding our kids as well. Our oldest daughter always felt it was her privilege to boss her siblings, and all of our older children insist that the youngest child in our family, another daughter, enjoyed multiple advantages they never had. Perceptions of privilege and advantage are probably as old as mankind itself. Sometimes such perceptives are completely faulty, but at other times they are partially or entirely valid. In our text today, the Apostle Paul recognized that the Jews did indeed have a unique advantage among the peoples of the earth. They were God's chosen nation the ones to whom he had revealed details of his nature and his requirements for human behavior. However, the unique advantage of the Jews had produced in them a feeling of superiority. Because they were recipients of a fuller knowledge of God and his ways, they deemed all Gentiles as heathen. They were confident that they were well equipped to be a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish. See Romans 2, 19 and 20. Yet they had failed lamentably to apply their knowledge of God's requirements to their own lives. In our focus verses, Paul forcibly asserted that despite the Jews' privileged position, they were still guilty before God. Although they knew the law well, that did not make them righteous. Along with the Gentiles, they stood condemned before God because they had rejected Him and failed to follow His commandments. There is no partiality with God. Many people today feel that their religious actions and activities make them better than their contemporaries who make no pretense of interest in religion. However, that assumption is as faulty as the Jews' assumption of superiority. Empty ritual will never suffice in God's sight. There is only one answer to human guilt. We are justified only when we come to God in humility and genuine repentance. The message that Paul proclaimed to the Romans is still valid today. God in His great mercy has made a provision for our sins through the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we must come to Him in His way. Background Information The word law appears many times in this portion of Paul's epistle. In some instances, the apostle was referring not only to the Mosaic law, but to the whole previous revelation of God, which made known God's will as to man's conduct. Today's text begins with Paul's statement that the righteous would be rewarded with glory, honor, and peace in contrast to the previously described retribution which would befall the ungodly. The apostle went on to assert that God's moral law applied to all. See verses 11 through 16. He then pointed to the guilt of the Jews who assumed they were accepted by God because they were recipients of the Mosaic law in spite of their breaking it. 
See verses 17 through 29. In verses 1 through 8 of chapter 3, the apostle anticipated arguments against his teachings and offered rebuttals. Finally, in verses 9 through 20, he restated a key principle of the gospel, that all mankind is sinful, and while the law brought a knowledge of understanding of sin, no one can be justified by works. The word respect in Paul's statement, there is no respect of persons with God, in Romans 2.11, could be defined as partiality or favoritism. Paul was pointing out that God does not adjust his dealings with man based upon whether the individual is a Jew or Gentile. Although the Gentiles did not possess the Old Testament instruction, moral principles were written upon their consciences. Condemnation was not based upon race, but upon revelation, and Jew and Gentile alike would one day stand before God in judgment. Paul pointed to the guilt of the Jews in Romans 2, 17-29. The term Jew, as used in 2.17, is synonymous with Hebrew or Israelite. However, the designation Jew typically refers to the religion of the descendants of Jacob, while Hebrew is a racial designation and Israelite is a nationality. Paul made clear that in spite of the religious practices of the Jews, they were breaking the commandments of God and thus were guilty. This substantiated his point that true religion is not found in observance of outward rituals but in moral obedience. Having shown the dangers of assuming privilege, Paul posed hypothetical questions in Romans 3, 1 through 8, to ensure that his readers understood there were, in fact, some advantages to a Jewish heritage. The primary advantage was that unto them, the Jews, were committed the oracles of God. See Romans 3, 2. The word oracles referred to the scriptures, which were delivered initially in a verbal form. Paul responded to each of his theoretical questions, beginning two of his responses with an exclamation of recoiling abhorrence, God forbid. Verses 9-20 through 20 restate that all of humanity is sinful. After delineating at some length the differences between the Jews and Gentiles, Paul declared that in spite of distinctions of nationality, belief, and culture, all mankind is under sin. Under in this case means to be dominated by or subjugated to the authority of. So Paul was making it clear that without exception, the human race is dominated and controlled by the sin nature. Verses 9 through 20 have the sense of a legal accusation, with verse 20 introducing two new pieces of information about the law, the impossibility of man being justified by self-effort, and the fact that the law reveals the true nature of sin. Conclusion no matter how an individual or group of people sees themselves, the human race, without exception, has a predisposition to evil and rebellion against God. But glory, honor, and peace, to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God. 
and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which hast the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Romans. Chapter 3. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, Let us do evil, that good may come. Whose damnation is just? What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre, with their tongues they have used deceit, the poison of asps is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin.